Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Kemp and I am a Corporate Commercial Solicitor specialising in the tourism and leisure sector at Wilkin Chapman. Visit Lincoln have asked us to provide a brief update on the issues for consumer facing businesses who have been forced to cancel events due to COVID-19. In this update, I intend to cover three scenarios. One, you've been forced to cancel an event as it was due to occur during the lockdown period. Two, the event is due to go ahead outside the lockdown period but for some reason your enablers are unable to provide you with equipment or catering to hold your event and so you have to cons cancel or postpone further. And three, the event is due to go ahead outside of the lockdown period, but your customer decides that they want to cancel. The problem here is that regardless of what your contract says, consumer protection legislation adds an extra layer of complexity as compared with B2B business to business contracts. So, dealing with scenario one, you've been forced to cancel an event as it was due to occur during the lockdown period. As you'll probably, probably be aware, the Competition and Markets Authority launched the COVID-19 Task Force on the 20th of March to scrutinise market developments, identify harmful sales and pricing practices as they emerge and take enforcement action if there is evidence that businesses may have breached competition or consumer protection law. The CMA has acknowledged that most businesses are trying to do the right thing in these unprecedented circumstances, but at the same time, ordinary consumers deserve to have their rights protected. It is also advised that businesses should not be profiting by double, recover double recovering their money from the government and from its customers. If the CMA finds evidence that businesses are failing to comply with the law, the CMA will take appropriate action, which could include taking that business to court if it does, does not address its concerns. The position in most cases is that where a contract is not performed as agreed, the CMA considers that consumer protection law will generally allow customers to obtain a refund. In particular, for most consumer contracts, the CMA would expect a consumer to be offered a full refund. One, where a business has cancelled a contract without providing any of the promised goods or services. Two, where no service is provided by a business for example, because this is presented by the government public health measures. Or three, where a consumer cancels or is prevented from receiving any services because government public health measures mean they are not allowed to use those services. In the CMA's view, the rights to a refund will usually apply even where the customer has paid what the business says is a non-refundable deposit or an advance payment. The CMA also considers that businesses should not charge an admin fee or equivalent for processing refunds in the above circumstances. With regards to credits and rebooking, consumers can normally be offered credits, vouchers, rebooking or rescheduling as an alternative to a refund, but they should not be misled or pressured into doing so, and a refund should still be an option available as clearly and easily as rescheduling or rebooking. Any restrictions that apply to credits, vouchers, rebooking or rescheduling, such as the period in which the credits must be used or the services must be rebooked, must also be fair to the customer and made very clear. So what about scenario two? The event is due to go ahead outside of the lockdown period, so maybe later in the summer when the lockdown is released but your suppliers are unable to provide you with the equipment or catering services to hold the event, and so you have to cancel or postpone the event further. Ordinarily, breach by a party of its obligations under a contract, resulting in non-performance or delayed performance of that contract, would result in that party being liable to pay the other party the losses that they suffer as a result of that breach. However, if the party's non-performance or delay in performance was caused by an event which was outside their control and where that circumstance is addressed by a force majeure clause in the contract, then the party relying on the clause may be able to sidestep that liability that would ordinarily have arisen as a result of their breach. You'll need to check whether your terms and conditions include, include a force majeure clause, not only with the contract with the consumer but also with your contract with your suppliers. Even if they don't include a force majeure clause, your contract might include other terms which gives you a general right to cancel or reschedule that event. Either way, 
the question of whether you can rely on a force majeure clause in a consumer contract and to set, sidestep that liability, or more general user right of cancellation, will depend on whether it's considered unfair in, under consumer protection legislation. Clearly, any decision to cancel an event outside of the government lockdown process will require careful consideration and consulting your insurance coverage. The Consumer Rights Act applies to all contracts between traders and consumers for the supply of goods, services or digital content. A force majeure clause is potentially unfair under the Consumer Rights Act, given its effect on the liability of the party who is seeking to rely on it, and particularly if a trader obtains an unfair windfall or a benefit from invoking such clause. Retaining all, unpre retaining all prepaid payments, such as deposits or advance payments, in circumstances where the event did not go ahead, is therefore likely to be viewed as being unfair and an unfair windfall or benefit. As a result, it would normally be advisable for businesses relying on force majeure clauses when cancelling an event to be prepared to issue a full or at least a partial refund to their customers. We then turn to scenario three. The event is due to go ahead outside of the lockdown period, but your customer decides that they want to cancel. Again, much will depend on what your terms and conditions say, whether the relevant clauses within them are fair, and the circumstances in which the customer wishes to cancel. If your terms provide your customers with generous rights to cancel, exchange or reschedule, then assuming they've been properly incorporated into the contract, you will need to adhere to those terms. If cancellation rights in favour of the customer are limited, in particular in circumstances where the trader, your business, has much wider rights to cancel, then whether or not you can rely on them will depend on whether they meet the fairness test under the Consumer Rights Act. The situation becomes more complicated where a customer cancels because they have COVID-19 and they are self-isolating because the government has told them that they're required to. However, generally speaking, customers who do bring contracts to an end without justification so for example, because they're simply being cautious about attending such an event or holding such an event, leading to loss suffered by the trader, cannot expect a full refund of sums paid. In these circumstances, it's the customer who should bear the risk. There are a couple of other important considerations to include here. So what about future contracts? Some contracts might require customers to pay now for the services that they will receive in the future after the current disruption has been lifted. The CMA advises that a business should not seek payments for a service it knows it will be unable to provide. Where the business reasonably expects to provide the service as agreed following the lockdown um, release of restrictions, it's the CMA's view that in general the business can require consumers to carry on making these payments for the time being. That could be the case, for example, for some services due to be provided later in the year. Consumer rights to refunds will depend on whether the services can then be actually provided when the time comes. Thank you for listening to the update today. If you do have any questions, please contact me on the details at the end of this seminar. Thank you.